year that we've done a lot of work on the farm. Um, and all that work was kind of uh, from a buck that we were chasing last year. Uh, we call him Cap. I'm really excited about this farm and one for one particular reason, and that's a buck that we actually Jake named, nicknamed Squiggles. Me and Rob's first hunt this year. Uh, we are out here. We're gonna take out a doe. We're gonna take out a mature buck. We're happy to be out in the stand. It's good to be out again. We're really looking forward to seeing some animals this weekend. So temperature looks right. Everything starts moving. It's starting to drop. And uh, hopefully it's gonna be a good night. We're hoping that a doe comes out this evening and, and we can send a serious arrow right through her. So stay tuned. Here's Derek with his deer. Ended up being a 10 point. And Derek's a special needs hunter. He's probably one of the hardest working guys that helped me. We do all the food plots together. We do all the tree stands, everything. All this off season work. So I'm so happy for you, Derek. Congratulations. The reason I'm here is I'm after a buck called Nip, um, who we had around a lot last year and has been showing up this year. And he's, he's a real nice deer had Nip on trail camera here. He was here last night in shooting light and a couple of nights before he was here in shooting light. This is the buck we call Nip. This great, great to get him on the ground. Well, here he is. So, as you can see, we shot the buck yesterday around 11 o'clock. We trailed him, probably went about 100 yards, and we found him laying here. Um, couldn't be any happier with this buck. We shifted over to the west and south of that uh, pinch that we had by the corn, so. Back. Back. 
Well, this is going to put the exclamation point um, on the 2022 gun season here in Wisconsin. What an awesome year. It's really been a roller coaster. And uh, when this buck stepped out of the marsh yesterday, I noticed he had a pretty bad leg. So it's always in the best ethics to, to put an animal down that you can tell is suffering at all, uh, especially with the harsh winter coming up. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. Um, we just drove in from, from Michigan out to Iowa today. Um, got here, left at 4.30 this morning, and here we are. Derek's got the gun tonight. He's got a, lucky enough to get a buck tag for out here. Nice, Derek. Good job. Yeah. Well, cool. We got uh, we got him. Good job, yeah. Derek. Here, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> we hope everyone enjoyed this year's episodes at Midwest Whitetail. And for everyone at Midwest Whitetail, we would like to thank you for your viewership and support, as this would not be possible without you. I want to take a few minutes and recap my season. Back in Michigan, I was able to get out several times in October. I was being very careful as I didn't want to overhunt these properties. On October 7th, I was able to harvest a nice dough and put some meat in the freezer. As October came to a close, my son Eric and I went out to Iowa to do some pheasant hunting and then I was off to Kansas for the November rut hunt. After arriving in Kansas, Eric and I quickly put up some Cuddyback trail cameras. We got our stand set in some of the spots that I had picked out. And one of the spots I'd picked out was a long, flat draw that pushed its way out into an old pasture and hay field. I began getting several pictures of some nice bucks on the trail cameras, including one we named Christmas. Christmas was showing up in the draw about every three or four days on one of the Cuddyback cameras. I had encounters with several bucks in that draw, and a couple of them were pretty nice, but I held out in hopes that I would get a shot at Christmas. Unfortunately, Eric had to go back home and I was self-filming my hunts. At about 10 a.m. on the last day of my hunt, I looked over my shoulder and to my surprise, Christmas was standing there at 15 yards. As he circled around me, I was unable to get the cameras turned on, but I did get a shot. After watching him go down, I excitedly got down out of my stand and walked up to him. It was a great way to end the season, but unfortunately, I was unable to get him on camera. I headed back to Michigan where the season came to close last week. As I have now retired and Eric has his own responsibilities, and it's been getting so hard to get a cameraman, after 12 years with Midwest Whitetail, I have decided that this will be my last year. My adventures with Midwest Whitetail started back in 2010. It was the year after I had shot Cottontail. Bill Winky hired myself and my son Eric to join the pro staff at Midwest. We started out great as Eric was able to shoot a nice buck. Then as the years went by, I really have enjoyed bringing hunting strategies and tips to those who watched, including watching food plot strategies work as both my sons, Eric and Brett, were able to shoot does in the same week. I was behind the camera a lot, teaching strategies to not only the viewers, but to my sons also. I did get to shoot a few deer along the way. That's Blade. And 
And uh, we had just talked about this buck this morning. Eric said, if Blade comes in, do you want to shoot him? And I said, well, you know, this year might be a good year because unfortunately, um, we are no longer going to be able to uh, lease this farm. And uh, this is our last year here hunting. I said, yeah, I'd take him if he came in. And unbelievable, he came in, made a good 35 yard shot on him. But uh, nice deer. Nice deer. But I truly enjoyed being able to show the viewers strategies on small food plots, how to decoy, how to use the wind, when to get a dog tracker and when not to, and many other uh, tips and strategies. So as the season concludes, I'm looking forward to next year to being a viewer of Midwest Whitetail. And I'm sure that the founder of Midwest Whitetail, Bill Winkie, wouldn't mind it that I said, Remember to always dream big.